Let's fight! Get yourself me, Dolly Anderson. Let's fight! We start to see guys as well. <laughs> we start to see guys as great. Let's fight! Let's fight with folks! Great to have each and every one of you with us, folks. <laughs> Dolly Addison, Andy Williams, Sharon Castillo, Everell Small, Magnel Barrow. Great to see each and every one of you. The technicians who have signed up for work tonight, do let us know if you're hearing us loud and clear. Welcome in the ring, folks, wherever you're joining us from. Peace and power. Good to see each and every one of you, folks. Watch it for the Caymans tonight. Why don't you? Please. Please and thank you. Watch it for the Caymans, good folks. Good folks, watch it for the Caymans. Great to have each and every one of you with us, wherever you're joining us from. Peace and power. Share the light. Smash that emoji button. Quite a program ahead of us, folks. So welcome in the ring. And let's get, to, let's get right to it. We trust that you guys are great. We trust that you all are well. Wherever you're joining us from, peace, peace, peace and power. And let us know if you're hearing that audio loud and clear. And more clear than loud. Good to have each and every one of you with us, folks. Great to have you here with us, as a matter of fact. Good to see you, Wilton Blue. Good to have you, Urban Dawn and Jamal Aziz, and all the other folks joining us. Where are you all joining us from? So nice, you gotta be right. Welcome in the ring to each and every one of you guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Merlin Sampson, good to have you, and, and Anthony Beckles, great to have you wherever, as we said, wherever. You folks are joining us from. We're happy that you guys are here. Kim and Vashti, Mona Moses, Shauna Fortune, Beverly Romain is here as well. Uh, good to see Roxanne Kodagan, uh, Taisha Wright, good to have you. Or is, is Tashia Wright, Erla Redwire, good to have you. Erla and Annalisa, lovely queen. I see Erin Dawn and Mavis Davis well. Guys, we're happy to have each and every one of you here with us tonight. Peace and power. Good to have you. We're fired up. We're ready to go. And we trust that you guys are as well. We are fired up. And we are ready to go. And we trust it's the same for you. Wherever you guys are joining us from, share the damn light. Smash that emoji button, good folks. And let me go down the road. We're fired up at this end, folks. Share, share, share the light. Mac Donna McDonald is here. And uh, Yannick Lynch is here. Junior Holder, Junior Gibbs. Uh, Shalon Joseph is here, uh, Kellen Crandon, Bridget Campbell, good to see you, Sean of Fortune, and uh, all the other guys joining us, Mona Moses, Wendy Stevens is here with us as well, great to see all of you folks on the line, you know just how we say it, we on the line, <laughs> that's how we say it, we don't say it in any uh, uh, much more elegant way than that, we on the line, Van Nelson, Faith Hurt, good to have you there, and Marva, Rodella Garnet, Kim Halley, good to have you, Kim. And Nelson is here. Gail Alicock, good to see you, Gail, and all the other folks joining us. Great to see you. Clifton Smith, Junior Gibbs, I see. Uh, Diane Fordyce is here. Ronald Passad, Kim Barton is here. Kim Batson is here. Kim Batson. Hazel Chase, good to have you. Ron Spencer, Tom, and Desiree, um, is it Vandy Cruz? Desiree Vandy Cruz, and uh, Silbert Stewart, good to have you, Silbert and Sharon Castillo. In other words, guys, share the line, smash that emoji button. We're going to have a go at it. Eureka Ferguson and all the other folks who are joining us, who are joining us, we're going to have a go at it. That's what we can do. We're going to have a go at it. Good to see each and every one of you, wherever you folks are joining us from. We got a couple of things on the fight, a couple of things, plural, on the fight card. We got a couple things on the fight card. Yep, in no given orders. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we can talk about the ladies. Top left. Top left. We can be talking about the ladies. Yep, kudos to them. Doing some good things. Doing some great things. As a matter of fact, what's going on in Cuba and the elections? We're going to circle to that. We're going to circle to that. Yep, Honduras. Honduras, uh, you got to do what you got to do. It's politics, eh? 
It's politics, eh? You gotta do what you gotta do. Honduras. We've been talking about Honduras. Yep, 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 yep. What happened with State House now? Hmm? A lot of crazy people attracted to State House, apparently. A lot of people who need elevator machine top floor. And we can circle back to that foot. What happened on our roads? Right. What happened in our roads? Kanji Bridge took one. Kanji Bobis. Had an accident on the bridge. Took a life. We can talk about this gentleman as well. Junior Hold, Charles Nelson, Lester Williams, Michaela Andrew Coates, and Valera, all the other folks watching us, Bridget, Sharon, uh, Brenda Bailey, and all the other folks. Share the damn live, smash that emoji button, folks. Let's have a go at it. We got a lot of things loading, you know, it's been the fight guy. As well, we got a lot of stories loading, folks. A lot of stories loading. And that one about State House is one we're still trying to get some information on. A man was seen lurking and rhyming in the vicinity of State House. In the vicinity, but them boys didn't take any chances this time. They weren't taking any chances this time at all. Right? The man was pacing the avenue, they tell us. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Them boys ain't taking no chances. They swoop down one time. Take a look. Take a listen. Some of what we saw outside State House yesterday during lunch. Take a look. Share the damn life and take a listen. It's one of the things we got loading. Let me know if you have got a story for us. <laughs> That's the number 627-6963. We did tell you we got some stuff loading. Folks, we head now into the opener. The opener, we open your appetites. Folks, we go to Mecca. Where I'm happy that folks are not waiting for us. You know, folks are highlighting what is happening in their own communities and how they are being shortchanged of their short of fortune. Roderick Henry, Penelope Grant, Princess Marcus, folks just like you, everyday people are highlighting, you know, how they're being shortchanged in their villages, in their communities. But I must warn you, this one is racy. You see, this one is a little kick. 
as a resident of Mecca, pointed out how a contractor on the ground there, doing a letter, dilly dallying and shilly shallying, you know. If every village got a contractor like the one we're going to see in Mecca, where we going? Where we going, Radam? You better brace it over. Right? The language is a little thing. If it's too much for you, well, you may got to say three Hail Marys and one our Father. Right? They get it out of your system. I tell you, the folks are upset. And so you have to make allowances for the language sometimes, how they want to express themselves, Roderick Henry and others. That's the opener. That's the opener, folks. That is the opener. We take you guys to Mocha, Arcadia. And a skullduggery contractor down the side. A skullduggery contractor. Take a look and take a listen. I want to show you all something here. Big effort for repairing the top of the bridge. But what we're looking at here today is you got beams run across like you see. And then you got beam run north to south. So look at the beam them. What at the bottom? These, these motherfucking things. These things rotten, so these guys just painting tar over it and then putting new board over it. This is nonsense. This is wasting taxpayers' money. And they make sense. Because just now the bottom of the bridge, bottom of the bridge got rotten out. Look here. Look here, Mother Scott. Them don't start. You see that? Bold done thing. What you going on here? This is not rotten. What? All this mother scunt rotten. Right? And then put a fresh water at the top. Don't bowl down and everything. Everything nice. Yes, you're going on it. For start, put in the wood for run north to south. All these motherfucking, most of these motherfucking things rotten. So, we are really trying to tell people at all, man. Yeah, F A for effort, but Z for the scunt are you doing? Watch all these motherfucking things rotten. All right through the bottom, they're rotten in front. And you can't see good properly in the bottom. The beam there might be solid, but these wood we sign up on here. This motherfucking thing rotten. So next next year now, Yaga broke down the whole bridge again on the next contract. If we're doing something, let me do something proper and done. Maybe the ministry might know about this. But the contractor doing a cock up walk. Not cock walk alone. This is a cock up walk. Everybody getting fucky. Everybody who live in this community. Yep. There you have it. The people are getting smarter by the day. By the day. And they look cock walk. When they see it, we did warn you that that one was a little. <laughs> was not very cautious at all. You know, I wish I had such an expansive, colorful vocabulary like that. Because sometimes English language fail me, you know. You run out of words and you don't get into the real gist of how you want to express yourself. You run out to the English language and you need something extra. My brother has been blessed, you see. He got an extra book. I used buy our sins. I don't know. We buy the book. But clearly, he got more sense. He got more sense. You see, people understand. They're looking to see what's happening. And they're now waiting. Thanks to the advent of social media. The coming falls. Then Cheng said, that's the opener, folks. That was the opener. Look at what else we're following. That's the opener. Mocha Arcadia. We take you around the world. And some of the things making the headline. Linda Booker, good to see you there. And Paula. And Seely. Good to have you and Pauline Chons. Good to have you, Pauline. Looks at what we covered. Share the damn life. Smash that emoji button. Let me go down your road. Rush and play, you know. Could you imagine a teenager, a young lady, went to school, drew some pictures, some pic, I have to say it like in Chinese, some pictures in her book. You know, anti war, the anti this Ukraine war. And the father got convicted. Yeah, ah, the different in Russia. You know the father upstairs promise the sins of the children follow the father, and the father's sins won't follow the children. Not so in Russia. Not so in Russia. You have to be he put he put it up to it. That'd be 
put in your logic. It got to be he influenced by the US or to call and I mean, so lovely queen who put him up to it, who did not have it. The daughter drew anti war. She didn't show me the finger to put it. Anti war pictures. Perhaps they were pro Ukraine. Who knows? The father was convicted. You think it's easy? <laughs> different. The Russians, different. That's going down there. And that side of the world, folks, Pamela Dover, different. South Africa, too different. The fellow faked his death. Facebook rapist. That's what he's termed. Facebook rapist. He would meet women online, lure them to different places, and rape them. Tabo Besta would lure young women to different places, different spots. Rob and rape. Rape and rob. The fellow faked his own death. He was in prison. And the authorities learned that there was a fire in his cell. And when they went in the cell, there was a body there. Putting one and one together, they said, well, Tabo gone, the judgment of God, the judgment of the Father. Hell came to him. He didn't have to wait. That was the conventional thinking. And now the authorities are being made to understand, or as us, us rest to say, the authorities overstand. After doing some DNA testing on that body in the prison cell, they realize it's not Tabo. No, 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 Tabo gun. So there's a manhunt on the way in South Africa for Tabo Bester. Yep. Manhunt, Tabo Mystic. Now that is an elaborate plot. Who body was in there then? Here it wasn't Tabo. And how did Tabo escape the clutches of the prison, the drawers? How did he escape? That's one for the books. That is certainly one for the book. Which they recapture him and hang him by his balls. You gotta make certain, you know. Facebook rapists, women, you gotta be careful out there. You know, the whole world has been turned upside down in a migrant detention center near the Mexico border, they tell us. They had a huge fire. 37 persons lost their lives. John Jones happened in the world. 37 persons lost their lives in that fire, that, uh, in, in that migrant center. I think that's what they call it. Alpha Jordan, 37. The whole world upside down. That's how we say it. Upside down. The whole world. Here's the chase. You saw that? Look at us we're tracking, folks. You remember that, that, um, that bank that collapsed recently? Silicon Valley Bank, SVB, my lord, my lord. You know, the people are very fearful. They are very, very, very fearful that other banks, because this one is linked to the global economy, believe it or not, is linked to the global economy. That's, that's why this is a global village. All of us are connected, you know, a ripple. Happens somewhere around the world. We feel it at the end. We feel it. Now the first set of hearings into the collapse of this bank is going to be heard by the U.S. Senate, or was supposed to be heard just today, as a matter of fact. The first hearing was supposed to be today by the U.S. Senate. On what led to the collapse of that bank? You know, a lot of people are scratching their heads. A lot of people didn't see it coming. A lot of gurus and financial wizards and so on didn't see it coming. You know, it's like humans. Hindsight 2020. Everything clear. But we don't see it coming. Now that's the trick of the trade. <laughs> that's where you're gonna make your money. The forecasting. You see? That's where you're gonna make the money. But the first hearing for this collapse of the bank, the um, Silicon Valley Bank, them done today. And I don't want to say much more on that. Because I think the former ambassador of Kuwait, who has the back channels for us, I think he has some more of that. He has the back channels tonight, always got his ears. 
to the ground, his hands on the pulse of what is happening internationally. Former Ambassador of Kuwait, uh, Professor Shamir Ali, he has the back channels for us tonight. Take a look and take a listen what he has for us. Yep, you got the back channels, folks. Professor Shamir Ali. Do we have it, guys? Got the back channels. He got the back channels. Good evening. Namaste. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Greetings to all the Muslim brothers and sisters globally on this holy Ramadan day, day five. Ladies and gentlemen, it is very important for us all to be aware what is happening in the world, especially in the United States, because of Guyana's closeness to America. And they usually say when America catches a fever, the whole world catches cold and pneumonia. So hopefully we individually and collectively and a nation can prepare ourselves and be alert. Well, the bad news is the 16th largest bank in the United States of America failed, the Silicon Bank of California. And in one day, $48 billion worth of depositors' money was withdrawn. Why? Well, for two years with COVID, etc., deposits were almost zero interest. So when the Federal Reserve Bank of the United States improved the interest rates, depositors went for 4 to 4 percent or some banks in new york were offering 50 percent in the interest that caused a run on their money one investor saw the dangers in that bank officers because they invested in long-term bonds because the interest rate was low so when the depositors withdrew their money they actually suffered a $1.8 billion loss. That triggered the rumors in social media, his both good and bad, each one tell one, and it multiplied, a multiplier effect in economics. And a huge investor, Peter Thiel, he saw it coming and he alerted everybody. He was able to get his company to move every penny of his money out of that bank but he left 50 billion of his money in the hope that he was wrong. Well, he got wiped out. Actress Sharon Stone lost half her wealth. She was in tears at a program in California. It is rumored that Prince Harry and Meghan has also suffered. The lesson is bank is about confidence. And when investors, depositors lose confidence, they take their money out. This is the global lesson anywhere. So be alert of what is happening. The good news from today, a bank in North Carolina, my state, by the name of Citizens First Citizens Bank has taken over Silicon Valley Bank. They have taken over what was worth 72 billion at that Silicon Valley Bank for 16.5 billion. That means that they bought 72 billion at a discount of 77% in layman terms for every dollar that the bank, Silicon Valley, Valley Bank had is now taken over for 23 cents. That is a family owned bank in North Carolina and it is said to be the largest, biggest family-owned bank that has been buying a lot of banks. What is the lesson, ladies and gentlemen? Cash is king. Whether you have it in your pocket, you have it in your bank, you have it in your home, manage it, manage it very, very wisely. At this time, over $90 billion of that bad assets at that Silicon Valley Bank is under the FDIC control, and they are trying to find out what to do. They have covered investment up to the tune of $250,000. An investor with an account in a bank of $300,000, $250,000 is covered by FDIC, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. And the banks pay a premium, and that premium is with the FDIC, and for this collapse, 
20 billion has gone. Alarming to me, warned federal governor Neil Kaskari from Minneapolis said, as a result, United States is in turmoil in the banking sector and will bring United States closer to a recession. It is already causing effect in Europe and in Asia, and it will affect others. At this time, over 190 U.S. banks are in trouble confidentially, like Silicon Valley Bank. And Fairhelp has just reported that customers have taken out a hundred and one hundred billion dollars from U.S. banks. On President Trump, there are four legal clouds. One, the hush money to Stormy Daniels. The Attorney General, a case is going on. If the jury agrees, he'll be summoned to a court. He'll have to picture taken, picture prints. He'll have to plead, then a date for trial. There's a second where he is company in New York, fraudulent tax returns and reports. That will be a civil case. The third case is in Georgia, where President Trump on the telephone, we all heard, asked for 11,780 votes plus one to win the election in Georgia. And the last but not final case at this time is in January the 6th. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not all doomsday. Plan to be better. Hopefully, Guyana will achieve the one nation, one people, one nation, one destiny. That is in our motto. Peace be with you. Think smart, act smart, and be smart for you, yourself, and your family. Be well and good night. Goodbye. If Professor Shamir Ali says it is so, it is so. <laughs> like how he said very calmly, one fell only left in 50 million. That's everything. <laughs> you ain't left 50 million. Roderick, how much you left? Keith Evans, how much did you leave? Eileen Griffith Norton, Glenford Gordon, Hazel Chase, only 50 million. <laughs> he took it everything. He left us something. 50 billion, yep, yep, yep. And as Professor said, uh, you know, other banks believe that they can fall too, you know, because these systems have a, uh, could have a domino effect. They promised to change that, uh, that, that kind of system after the last, after, two, after the 2008 uh, meltdown. They promised to change the system. Let's see what happens, fingers crossed. I ain't gonna have much there. And it comes, Lester Williams, elderly girl, but I didn't think I got much there. That's the back channels, folks. Moving on to some of what's happening in the region. Quickly, quickly, what's going down in the region. Look what happened here now. You know your friends where rough time comes, you know. You know your friends, your real friends. When rough time comes, Honduras President Zamora Castro. Well, she kick out Taiwan. Tell them they can hold us. Kick out Taiwan, why? You know, because China comes in investments and jobs. How much she always sell me for a little work? How much she always sell me for a little money? Eh? How many? How many? Just say no, Honduras. Tell Taiwan, get out. I hope. I hope. When she catches your tail. Eh? I hope when she catches your tail, she'll run back. Because then Taiwan can say, all right, beat out. She told them they got 30 days to pack up shop, the embassy, and go pack your bags and go, Taiwan. Of course, you want to get into all the one China policy and China believes Taiwan is theirs rightfully and they want back, they want to come back in the fall and all of that. But I surprise in Honduras. Eh? For a plate of food, eh? Owen Bacchus, for a plate of food. Some people betray you. Don't come wrong, them funny. For a plate of food, that's what Zamora selling out the Taiwanese for you. A plate of food. Yep. It's when hard times come, you know your real friends. Boss a shot for your real friends, Chisel Chipper. Sandra Hanover, it's when hard times come. Candy the lean and the jig. Then you know your real friends. Then you know your real friends. 
Some of the things we're following around the region. Look what else we're following. Yeah, Honduras. I ain't going to know more. Cuba had elections. 470 persons for the National Assembly. No opposition. No opposition. None. No opposition in Cuba. Uh, the government calls the results a home run. <laughs> Those opposed, you know, to the regime, to the administration, they say it's a farce. You can't have a government, you know, and nobody, you know, opposes. There are no candidates running against. Something will take you about that. Gallis Musa, Glenford Gordon, Anche De Silva. Something is wrong about that. Annalisa Queen, Chisel Chipper. Yep, yep, yep. Right. So, Elian Gonzalez, I'm happy that uh, Chisel Chipper is reminding me, was running for uh, the National Assembly there. That means he has gone through and is now a part of the legislature as his father was before him, Donna Miller. Still love, I still love Cuba culturally. Political system, like us, need a lot of overhauling. Like us, need a lot of overhaul. You see, but culturally, beautiful country. Beautiful country. Love it, love it, love it, love it. That's somewhat we're following. Cuba, I don't think we're done yet. Yeah? Closer to home in Trinidad and Tobago. You know, this is like, I don't know, I, I, I don't know how to read this. A woman was abducted and raped. You know, abducted and raped. In Trinidad, but there's circumstances surrounding that. She and her boyfriend at a bar, they had an argument and she left. You know, she left. And as she was heading down the road, walking, a car pulled up, two men jumped out and forced her in. And when they were finished doing their dastardly act, you know, they left her with her life, pulled her up by a bridge. Yeah. Yeah, so what started as a small issue inside a bar, the, the girl left. I hope they find them, make them an example. Trinidad and Tobago, I hope they find them and make them an example. Uh, this is in Chase Village. That's where the area where this went down. Chase Village in Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah. Believe it or not. Believe it or not. And right off the coast, I think of Antigua. You know, this horrific... Well, this is... Um, this is this is just um, Latin America just... In the shores of one pocket territory to the next. A landslide in Ecuador, they tell us. 16 dead. Right? This happened in the uh, canton of Alusi. That's what the area is called. In the Andes Mountains in Ecuador. 16 dead from this land. Like, folks, there's a few people of faith. We got to pray for our world. We got to pray for our world. I find like it since the people come coming though. I find like it since them boys come in. We got to pray for our world. 16 dead in a landslide. In Ecuador, and then we're going to tell you what happened after off the coast of Antigua and Barbuda. You know, 16 missing, three dead, 22 were in a boat when it capsized in the Eastern Caribbean Sea. These were Africans, they're telling us, coming from the coast when the boat capsized, looking for a better life in pursuit of happiness. 16 missing, 3 dead. Just today, this is today. In the Eastern Caribbean, we got to pray for those of you people of faith. You better pray. You know, pray, pray, pray. Pray. 16 dead, 22 capsized in the boat. 16 missing, rather, 3 dead. What do you call that? That's purgatory. They call it confusion powder. That is what it is. You know what? That's happening in our world today. And they'll be coming in 592. They'll be coming in 592, Donna Miller. Terrence Dean.
Alphon Parts, Loretta Argyle, Andrew Griffith, Philip of Pearson. Then we come to our world, to our dominion. The 592. That take down the goal quick before it go missing. Radam, Bradham. Radam and Bradham. Look story you now. Folks, this is a story to have. Kaim and attack. Kaim and attack in the Rupununi. The fellow went fishing with some of his, his friends. He went fishing. And he said they had already uh, cast the sign. Right? They throw the bait. And they were relaxing. Taking a rest. When this Cayman attacked Russell Alicott and Kaichu News, who we got this, uh, this story from, says that the Cayman attacked Alicott from between his legs. That's a mistake, Cayman. You don't attack a man between his legs. And the report says that Russell fought the Cayman, was a, a giant Cayman, they said. Said the big commissioner Cole, you don't attack a man be between his legs. You're looking to die. You're looking to die. They were relaxing and he attacked Russell Alicock. And it's, the story says, the report says Alicock fought him. Fought the Cayman. Right? You got to fight sometimes, you know. You know his life was at stake. Fought the Cayman, asked the fellow who was close to him to pass the knife and stab the Cayman. And as they were trashing around, I wish we had some like video of honest to God. The story says Russell Alicock fought with the Cayman, and as the Cayman was retreating, you know, he fired a bite. That's what his story said. He fired a bite and caught the hand of Alicock. Right? He fired a bite and caught the hand of Alicock. You know? But he survived. He took his arm. You know, some fight can cost you something, you know. He took his arm. I don't know. I had to go looking for the Cayman. If it was the rest of my life, like Moby Dick, how are you going hunting the Cayman? And I want you fresh with me things in the belly. Because like a like a paku, you're gonna bust the belly. Took his hand. Took his hand. I sorry, Alicard didn't kill him. We got some caimans to deal with, you know. You won't creep up on a man trying to bite him between his legs. What kind of homosexual Cayman is, is, is this here now? Fought him. Fought him. Stop the Cayman. The difference in Rupunun, you know. Oh, y'all are here. Y'all are here. And, um, y'all are here. And, on, on the coast. You know, nice and pretty on the coast. You see? Here in Dusk, you sure you got a little, take a polish wiping off. And we're really going to fight Caymans. You think it's easy? You got to fight Caymans. And our thoughts and prayers are with our brother. Our thoughts and prayers are with our brother. And we hope he gets well soon. The thing took his hand, you know. Sweet Jesus. Took his hand, Don Sullivan, Chanel Wills, Gershel, Yvette Madu, Roxanne Garraway, Dolores, Sukchan Sudhari, Marlene Brown, Jesus. They said the fight was almost done when the Cayman snapped back. And caught Alicock's hand. Think it easy? 
thoughts and prayers thoughts and prayers go out to the young man and his family you know we hope he gets well soon you know this is going to be his new normal i don't go looking for the cayman like a jagabat in a trench cap oh i don't go looking for the cayman looking look at us we following folks this story here got teeth like the cayman oh my god to me like this one here is something else right the only thing missing from this one is two caimans. Alex Green. The only thing missing from this one is two caimans. The woman left. She came to Guyana to transaction business. And she was taken to the airport. Is who killed Roma? That's why you want to. Who killed Roma? Right? You know her nephew has been cleared. Her nephew has been cleared. He said he took her to the airport. And the airport surveillance cameras show that he dropped her off at the airport. It showed he dropped her off to the airport. Who killed Roma? If you know, you better start talking. You better start talking. <laughs> Who's Roma? Happy you ask. We're going to unpack this one. Roma is that body that was found. Roma Dukulan, her body was found. On a beach in Leguan, a uniform beach. She's 68 years old, and her partially nude body was found at uniform beach at Leguan in Region 3. And here when the postmortem examination told us, John Jones, she died of compression to the neck. Blunt trauma to the head. Me think you need a pathologist to interpret that for you. Bantu King. Bantu King. Compression to the neck. Blunt trauma to the head. 68 years old. Her body washed up. On the shoreline at Uniform Beach near Leguan. They tell her she's formerly of Perth Village on the Essequibo Coast. Pameroon Supernam, and she arrived in Guyana to finalize several business transactions a week prior to when they found her body. A week prior to when they found her body. Her nephew, as I said, said about 22, 45 hours on March 14th. You see? He dropped her off at the airport. Instead of boarding the flight, this is where the story gets interesting. Instead of boarding the flight and be back to Canada, she took a taxi and departed Cherry Jagger International. Where did she go? They tell us she went to a hotel on the East Bank. She went, she took a taxi to Diamond Ladder on the East Bank. Right? She took a taxi to Diamond on the East Bank. And then to the Pegasus Hotel. And there, it is from there things get murky now. It is from that point things get murky. And they tell us, the local back channels, that they are now looking at the surveillance cameras on the Dem Rara Harbor Bridge. Trying to see if the same taxi driver took her over the river. How did she get to Leguan Beach? You want to tell me she fell off a balcony at Pegasus, compression to the neck, don't try to the end, and floating over to Leguan in a day? So they're looking to see, going through those, scrubbing through those surveillance videos of the Devil Harbor Bridge, to see if the same taxi driver is the one who took her over there. Yeah. 68 years old. Some foul play happened here. You see the part that says she came to transact to finalize several, several business transactions? Hmm? Something in that cousin lady death. Something in that Marlene Brown. Right? Who would want to kill her? That's the right question. Andrew Griffith. Who would want to kill her? The police would know. The police will know 
because of Arthur Conan Doyle. He says, when you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. Must be the truth. Who wanted this woman harm? Hmm? Who wanted her harm? Who? Who? Is who killed her? Somebody know. Some person or persons know who wanted to harm Roma Dukaran. Yeah. Yeah. As we have more information, folks, we're going to dial back to that and continue to unpack this story. Is who killed Roma? And why? Hmm. Hmm. That's what we think there. Moving on, folks. The young men in bisection. Yes, the caimans, the jagabats, the tadpoles, the cracketers, the giant black sheep, the black belly sheep, the giant black chicken, whole animal farm. Respect our manners. The ladies doing well. You know? I know them boys don't like these kind of things. Huh? Them boys don't like these kind of things. You know? Acting Chancellor of the Judiciary. You have a comments and words. She says that the judiciary has to be above par. The judiciary, it got to be above par. This was at the Judicial Assets Recovery Conference that was sponsored by the Americans and some other folks. This comment was made. It must be above par, Acting Chancellor said. She said, in this age of oil and gas, we got up the game. I tell you what the Chancellor said. We got to up our game. I, I love it. I love it. Right? Without fear or favor. Right? You know, it's just a, she can be a target for them boys. It's just like, they're like this kind of high flown things, you know, above par. No, 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 no. They want people they can call and instruct. But not these legal luminaries. Right? Not these legal luminaries. The Chancellor says, it is no secret Guyana has experienced an economic boom. That's what she said. An economic boom. Or we've been on that trajectory. And with that, that development and that type and magnitude of such development is historic. Right? The spin-off, oil and gas, and its related industries, and the challenges and the legal issues associated with such economic developments are well known. And the judiciary of Guyana must meet those challenges legally. I love that. I love that. The judiciary must meet those challenges legally and prepare itself to meet those challenges legally. Right? That's a fund we got to continue to develop on because them boys come in all kinds of things, you know. Is the judiciary just declared the air fund acted illegally? Him and his cabal acted illegally. Why are you surprised? Dismiss the judicial, the, uh, the police service commission acted illegally. Right? Where is the way the whole government acts illegally? And it's case after case. It's not the only one. Now with the same face, I see you all by. Say so he got an appeal. When seeds, he got an appeal. He had better to do the time. He know this case has no chance of success. But he going to he he going to waste money. He's going to appeal. <laughs> he going to appeal. If we had lost, and we were going to appeal. Oh my God! He had been on the lexicon. To tell us about our parentage. <laughs> right, but he going to appeal to save face. To save face, of course. Yeah? Look what else we're following. Look what else we're following. Father have his mercies. Father have his mercies. Right place, wrong time. The Mami Kanji Bridge. Security guard. Glenn McCloy. Going home. Pushing the bike. That's the only sin, you know. That's the only sin. And a white lot. 
lose control look up Glenn McLean upside down he only said you're the Kanji bitch when he back and he going down the road you know think about tomorrow and how we gonna work harder you know to make ends meet for himself and his family he knew I got the white loads coming he didn't know that and that's how Glenn McCoy loses his life on the Kanji bridge because we got a set of white loads in this country who can't slow down and let me arrive alive and you see that's why I wish I had some of my vocabulary from my brother who we started the, the program with in the opener we got to just run out of words from the English language. That is how our brother, Glenn McLeod, loses his life because of white loads. A white loads on the Kanji Bridge. And that's a toxic mixture. A white loads, and you put in the Kanji Bridge there. Right? You put in the Kanji Bridge there. They tell us that the the driver of the motor car was proceeding west along the northern drive lane at a fast rate of speed. When he lost control and collided with Glenn, who was doing what? He didn't even ride in. Pushing the bike, as if you know the Kanji Bridge. Here's an R. High bridge. Right? If you could ride up the bridge, you could fight Kaiman. If you could ride up the bridge, you could fight Kaiman. Pushing his bicycle. Right? And that's it, you know. My God. Life has gotten too cheap in this country. Our thoughts and prayers go out to Glenn McLeod and his family. You know, to his family, friends and loved ones. Yeah. I try not to go to the other dictionary. You know, that other dictionary that my brother had Try not to go there. Slow down, folks, please. Slow down. I love you arrive alive. Slow down. So we can arrive alive. Spotted. Not in the way you think, though. Spotted. New book alert. <laughs> I wrote something. I haven't seen a book in a long time. And the Facebook don't come. Karen Archibald. Some of you haven't seen a book in a long time. Facebook don't come. Leslie Williams, Armadou, Roxanne Dessa, and Elizabeth Kitt, Armadou, Favorite Book Kong. New book alert, right? While y'all out here polluting the world, the people in South Tupanuni, especially those in the conservation society, just published a new book. A new book is not the first. This is a basic guide to amphibians and reptiles. I'm sure they got some trench couples in there. Some duck poles and some cricketers. Certain. Amphibians and reptiles. It's going to climb on our two toe. Yep. New book alert. Published by the South Rupununi Conservation Society. So why are you mining people business on Facebook? Mining people business on the gram? Mining people business on TikTok? I said my Glenn Lal voice. On TikTok. The people in South Group are only busy getting smarter and brighter. All right? And they're going to teach us a thing or two. But the trench crapples, the jaggerbacks, the tadpoles, and the cricketers. Teach us a thing or two. Congrats to the folks there. Congrats. New book alert, folks. New book alert. We're coming down. We're coming down. The closer. <laughs> I tell you. We're coming down. The closer. Joe Jagan sat down recently. Son of the former president, uh, uh, for, well, former presidents, Cherry Jagan and Janet Jagan, sat down recently with Marvin Williams. Marvin asked him about cost of living, asked him about corruption. Folks, I'd be wicked if I didn't replay and repeat some of what Joey Jagan said. You know, give Joey Jagan one thing among the many is the, is the courage of his convictions. So many folks, you see, will kiss us to be part of that foolishness. Right? That fecal matter show, that shit show on the other side. 
So too many folks selling out, selling out for what is rightly Joey Jagan's, rightly his, billionaire of his parents' legacy. You see, you can imagine if some of them had a Jagan name behind them. Could you imagine that? These Jagabas and Trench Crappos, these charlatans, these Nakavakamites, these Sadducees and Pharisees, they know nothing. And they're trying to be lord over people. But look at the humility of Joey Jagan. That's the closer. I want to share some of that interview with you. He sat down with Mervyn Williams quite recently. Quite recently, folks. Quite recently. He talked about corruption. His parents' belief system, you know, the high cost of living. Folks, take a look and take a listen. Take a look and take a listen. Ghana has become a wealthy country. For some, perhaps. Right. The numbers are big. The volume of oil is tremendous. Right. The potential for growth is enormous. But the working class in this country that special group of people that your family has stood up for and mm. defended and advocated for is not benefiting from the wealth, from the oil resources of this country. How do you feel about this? And how do you feel about the fact that this situation where the working class is not benefiting from the resources stems largely from growing inequalities in the distribution of the resources of state. How, how does this affect you? Well, you know, I'm a his, I uh, read a lot. I'm reading a book right now. I just finished reading a book about World War II. It's an 800-page book uh, on Stalin and how he was the big winner in World War II. And, it, and, it's, and it's true. And I'm reading a book now on the French Revolution. And when the French Revolution occurred in 1789, a year before the French Revolution, nobody even thought it could happen, and it happened. And the same thing will happen here if people don't heed the working class needs. The same thing will happen here. Just like the French Revolution, people are going to rebel because Guyanese have a history of rebellion in them, starting with Mr. Coffee. When the people talk about... Uh, the father in the nation, as far as I'm concerned, coffee is the father in the nation. Coffee. This coffee started it. And we rebelled right through. Jagan was a rebellious man. And his son as well. Right. Well, <laughs> I, I don't think of myself as rebellious, really. I don't think of myself because one of the reasons I couldn't get ahead in the PPP is because I'm too much in the right. And maybe you might find me too much in the right. But I'm on the right when it comes to certain things. Like, for example, I'm for republicanism. I'm a Republican in America. I don't like the way the Republican Party going now with Trump. He's a waste of time and a clown. <laughs> but the Republican Party is a party that has a history behind it. George Washington didn't have Republicanism then, but he didn't be a Republican. Lincoln was a Republican. You understand? But Ronald Reagan was a great president. He was a Republican. You understand? So yeah. Eisenhower was a great president. He was a Republican. So I'm a Republican in one sense that is most important, given let local government flourish. I don't believe in central government running everything. And that applies to every government we had. And when you talk with the natural resources, listen to me, Guyana always had natural resources. Always. Mm -hmm. And what do we do with it? For example, when you talk about the working class, I've always been committed to the working class. I don't think anybody could doubt that because if they go and check Joey, Joey was the son of a prime minister, a chief minister, prime minister, and president. And go and examine what Joey get out of Two presidents. Right. Two presidents. I know Godfather was president. Exactly. God bless his soul. What I'm saying to you is that show me, go and check my bank accounts. Come and see where I live and see what I got, which is nothing much out there. I never looked for a position. Of, I always was interested in seeing the working people of this country flourish and do well. I believe everybody in this country could have a lot of money, a good money to live a good life, right? But we need to start doing things 
And I don't want to go into the past and blame anybody. Everybody made mistakes. But to go and and you gotta know your history though, right? But to go back in the past and blame, we always had resources. And what did our leaders do with it? Where did we benefit? All we did was run out the country, which still happening, go down by the uh by the post by the passport officer. Huh? See how many people leave and check the planes. People still running out of Ghana with all the resources we always had. This is why, for example, when our leaders can tell me about helping the working people, I got practical ways to help the working people. Why they don't use try listening to why saying for change? For example, take housing. Why we can't give people free wood and free land to build a house? I don't understand what's going on here. All the parts when you fly in here. It's sheer forest, you know that. Why our people got to pay for house and for land? It should be free. They're going to help the working people. All the money we spend in this stadium and this stadium. In the meantime, the working people don't have proper electricity, water, and sewage. But we're building new roads and new uh, this and that. And, and it's all of them are the same, basically. I ain't seeing much difference. That's my problem. You understand? I ain't seen, you, you talk the talk, I mean, you got to walk the walk when you get into power. This is when you walk in the walk. You know, walking, you're stumbling around, all of them. So I got a serious problem. This is why I believe that no matter which party, which ideology, it all comes down to one thing, let the young people run the country. Young people promote them. When I talk about Sharing power like my father believed in, for example, the winner should not take all. If you're going to share power, share it with the younger members of the opposite party, not the old people. They had their time. They had their period. Let the young people flourish in this country. And we're going to see great advances. And the working people must flourish. Yeah, I agree with that. What is, what is, your, what is your view on this rising cost of living, how it's affecting the working class citizens in this country, even in the face of an emerging oil and gas sector with tremendous potential and, right. and wealth. What can we do differently as a country to ensure that this shock from the cost of living doesn't hit home as hard as it's hitting home right now? Well, first of all, I believe that I'm... well. If anybody checks my background in talking about the oil and gas, I'm no expert, but I always welcome X on here. You know that. Yeah. Always welcome him here. And I haven't, people might criticize X on, that's their problem, not mine. I don't get into that because I know the history of Mr. John D. Rockefeller, where he set up with, with the first company he had, Standard Oil, yeah. which broke in. They try, you know, they tried. They took him to court and broke up his corporation. The, you know, Rockefeller Standard Oil. Yeah. In 1912, broke up Standard Oil. And you know, when they were finished, it broke it into eight parts. And when they were finished, and, it, and a couple of years passed, it turns out he made money from the deal. He got richer. He was so smart. So, you know, we know what Mob Exxon Mobil is about. Everybody knows. If you, you know, you're stupid. The regular guy, this is not stupid. They know there's a white man coming here and the white man looking to do one thing, make money. Right? They always was looking for the... They know to destroy everything and build it back. Right? Look at Ukraine. They can destroy the... And they can build it back. The people can make money. You understand? So what I'm saying is our future is not oil and gas. I don't look at it that way. I look at it because we always had all the other things. We got all them forests, water. I look at our future as agriculture. We need to specialize in agriculture. We, and they don't carry only cost of living. If we have a policy our leaders could agree on, I'm not a leader or a leader, that all food produced in Ghana for export, you got to feed the guy these people first. Mm -hmm. They must benefit first before you export anything. And everybody can make money. The exporters, the growers, everybody. And then my godfather, Mr. Bornham, gave us the answer. Cooperative farming. Cooperatives. 
Now, where I disagree with Mr. Barnum is that he believes in cooperative socialism. I don't believe in that. I believe in cooperative capitalism. They must make money. This is all the working class. And then, guess what? We got a great future in our culture. Because I've studied this. If you look at California, they produce the biggest food supply of fruits in the world. How do they do it? They use migrant labor from Mexico. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of migrant labor we could bring here from all the countries around us and make big bucks. But we choose, apparently, the, the preference for, um, for tapping into in terms of migrant market seems to be Afghanistan. That's no, what, that's no, what I've been hearing. No, I don't believe in that. I believe yeah. we should bring migrants from places close to us Precisely. Who, and work out a deal. If they want to stay and live here and become citizens, okay, you could do that in 20 years. Well, but you got to prove yourself first. Your godfather started that with the St. Lucians and the St. Vincentians, uh, working, yeah. uh, working particularly in, in Madia and so on. Right. Well, all those are good ideas. But one thing, we need to, to move ahead and concentrate on our agricultural resources. They're going to bring down the price of food. For example, what they could do now, what any government should do now, is wipe out the consumption tax immediately. That's a waste of time. We have money. Why are you charging Guyanese a consumption tax of 14%? I was disappointed you to value, tell you the truth. value added tax. Yeah. The value added tax. Yeah. 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 The VAT. Yes. It's Mr. Granger lowered it 2%. Yeah. I don't agree with that. I thought it should be lowered to 6% and it should be wiped out completely. That's a waste of time. Since we are all producer, we should move our, we have to have objectives. Our objective with those kind of things should be no income tax at all. Well, we need income tax here if we're making all this money. So you, you can't get there overnight, but you could plan to get there. Well, the opposition leader has been advocating for um, a removal of the personal income tax, yeah, and particularly with respect to people earning one hundred and fifty thousand dollars per month. In okay, the, in the first, in the first right. um, stage, yeah. so he, there seemed to be a departure from things jargon. Um, yeah, there are serious allegations which have been leveled against a senior government official by Vice News, uh, Mr. Jagdeo, there are allegations against him um, that reek of um, corruption and all that. Mm. Is this People's Progressive Party still, in your view, the party of Chedi Jagon, what he uh, worked for, what, uh, the party that he built, the party that he bequeathed to this nation? How, how are things in your, in your estimation? Well, you know, I just wrote a letter in the paper, and uh, I cited certain things of a political nature. For example, my father believed in sharing power. Yeah. I see Mr. Jagdeo got up and said he needs to trust people before he can share. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. I said, trust the young people of this country. That's who you got to trust. We to all, look at me and you, the old people. We won't run anything we empower for. Let the young people with their ideas. Look at me. I don't even know the text. I know the use of form. I don't know the text. I don't want to know. But they, the, the way they do texting is unbelievable when I watch them. So let the young people flourish in this country. Oh, my God. Old men run this country for too long. Let the young people flourish now. We shouldn't have no ministers in this country over 45, 50 years old. We need young people to run our country. We don't need no 25 ministers. I disagree with that. My father, I used to talk to my father. He always aimed to bring down the ministries. Because you remember in the 60s, he had six ministers. Mm -hmm. And I've worked on that in my mind. And I think we could have 11, 12 ministers the most in this country. We don't need 25 minutes. All the money just wasting. They could go to the poor and the middle the working class to help their lives. But nah, we wasting on all these like, ministers of operating affairs. What do we need that for? We could have a commission of operating affairs and give the operating everything they are due for. Like, for example, a casino where they run and there's all the only Armenians work there and all the profits are tax free for them. Things like that the Armenians need. And they, you know, because people come in, they like casinos. You understand? So things like that could be worked out. So, 
you know, I feel that those are the things we need to be doing to move ahead. We have to have vision. You can't move ahead without a vision, but leave the young people to accomplish these things. They have the vision, not us. We live in the past, most of us. Want well, to blame this one and blame the one. Oh, this one. Yes, but to come to your question, yes, I feel that Chetty Jagan was an innovative man. Chetty Jagan was a man who could learn from his mistakes. This is why when you see Chetty Jagan was wailing and rallying against the white man for all them years. When he became president, he started to change some of his views, especially in foreign policy, to be viable. But then you got to remember now, Chetty Jagan didn't have the same caliber of people he had in the Sixers. The, the Rams, the Hoys. Everybody had left. Bradley and company. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and people underestimated Brindley Ben, for example. Brindley Ben, I knew him. Brindley Ben was a man who was a very dapper man, always dressed sharp, always, suit and tie. <laughs> Bal Ram Singh, right here, a lot of controversy about Bal Ram Singh, right, for example. I, Baram Singh Rai's problem was that he was in the right. I mean, you're in the right and the leftist party, you got problems, right? But Baram Singh Rai knew him. He was Home Affairs Minister. I used to see him. He was, oh, wow. He had the perfect tie. He was perfect. His hair was well groomed. And he, he, was, he was a stalwart. He wasn't a dishonest man. He wasn't a thief. So, like I said in the letter, if you're in government, you commit corruption. Here, my father always told me, don't accuse a man of corruption unless you got proof. I grew up listening to that. So I don't want to make comments on people. Let the people judge them. Is the people got to judge them in the end. So all I'm saying is corruption, my father viewed corruption and thievery in government as worse than murder. I, saw, I, that. I right? saw that in your letter. My father told me to my face, you hear? He couldn't do it. But in communist countries, certain communist countries, like in Vietnam, you caught in corruption government, you're shot. He told me that one time, he said, I wish I could do that. Just take them in the backyard and shoot them, we might but even from the people. We might have no cabinet ministers in Guyana. Well, I don't time. know about that. I don't want to, <laughs> but what I want to say though, is I believe that in the PPP, they are good people. Yes. I'm not sick on them and all them. Yeah. They are good people in the PPP. Just like they're good people and bad people in every party. Right. Is your policy and how you carry it out. Because ultimately, you can't come to power if you don't win. I don't believe in no rigged election. Sorry. I don't go along with that. Right? That is not the way to go. Because any election from any party in this country is winnable if you do it right. Yeah. I, I don't want to get into a lot of things, but the last election, I felt could have gone the other way easily. Some of us feel that it did, in fact, go the other way. Well, I, I don't buy the one. I, <laughs> I don't go along with that. Sorry, not me. <laughs> well, I, some, I'm I just feel, saying some of us do. I feel, yeah, well, that's yeah. your right. But I feel, but so is my right. I feel you got to shake it off and move on. And move on. Yes, right, I you got to move you. on and, and gather your forces for the next battle. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. But you got to move on. And the only way to move on, and there's another criticism I got, my father believed in coalition government. He believed in it. This is why he created the civic. But the civic that he created, he meant it to be viable and enduring. It's not. The civic just got personality starting with Sam Hines. Just a personality. And guess what? Sam Hines, I'm going to say it publicly, he got to be the luckiest man I ever had. Period. He drawing. He was prime minister, president, ambassador now. You know what kind of money he can be drawing? He get away with murder. You understand what I'm saying? He, I'm going to say get away with murder. He's Nobody a understand. lucky man. So, yeah. but did he represent any civic? Could Sam Hines win Linden? He never did. So, politics is a strange thing, you know. So, people survive by doing whatever they got to do in politics. Some people thief their way through. Some, you know, they got a lot of them. They got some people who are honest, but they get submerged because they can't speak out. They go along with it. Look at the Republican Party in, in America. They go in along with what Trump's saying. You understand? So that's what goes on. Ghana. Yeah.
That's the close of folks. That is the close. I can't add to them. And I can subtract. I can't. I can't. Dr. Joey Jagan, the son of the late president. President Shelly Jagan and Janet Jagan as well. Yep. And thanks, Morgan Williams, for that interview. Peace and power, folks. Peace and power. That was the closer. You want to say then thanks for the thing? <laughs> thanks for the thing. Right, we said busy like we left for the end. Thanks for the thing, folks. Folks, we want to thank you guys for helping us to go from show to show. Program to program. We want to say thanks for helping us go from program to program, show to show, or you know, day after day, week after week, month after month, and now year after year. Thanks to you folks. This is how we are able to, to do it because of your love, your support, and your generosity. If you want to be a part of helping us to move forward, here is how you guys can do that. And then, thanks for the team. Want to keep getting the best in the ring? Yes. You can help us to keep going by partnering with us through your contributions. And it's easy. Send us a daily, weekly, or monthly donation, whichever is most convenient to you. Cash app at dollar sign in the ring 592, Zell and PayPal in the ring 592 at gmail.com, or WhatsApp us on 627-6963 for how to contribute via MoneyGram and Western Union and for MMG payment. And I have to tell you as well, good folks. If you need a good commissioner of votes to offer David and the justice of the peace for expert guidance and support for all your documentation needs, the Alistair Collins firm, let it be the one for you. It is for us. We use them personally as a commissioner of votes to offer David and a justice of the peace. Alistair Collins provides expert, expert guidance and support for all your documentation needs, as we've said. Monday through Saturday, they're open down there at the Callion Mall, right on the ground floor. You can't miss them as you go in. Right on the ground floor at the Callion Mall. Lamaha Street between Camp and Waterloo Street. 649-6410, 685-6448. Those are the numbers, folks. Lamaha Street, the Callion Mall between Camp and Waterloo Street. We trust them, folks. We trust them. We recommend them highly, highly. Highly recommend them. Learn thanks for the thing. <laughs> we miss in the end. But you know yourself. Thanks for the thing, Lynn. And all those other folks who help us to keep on keeping on. Yep. Thanks for the thing. Thanks for the thing is good, folks. That's our time. That being said, that's me time. And that's me program. Thanks for joining us, folks. That is me time. Cecilia Joseph English. Cecilia Joseph English. And Diane Graves. And then how are you doing? Thanks for the thing, man. <laughs> Candy Lady Legit, uh, Renella Garnett, and Michaela Coates. Thanks for the thing, Candy. Run the court and all the other folks who are so helpful to us. Keep us moving forward. That's our time, good folks. And that is the program. That was the last bell. <laughs> Peace and